Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. All right, welcome to Think Big with Dan and Cosm, and our guest today is Zach. So, Zach, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us where you live and what you do for a living. So, my name is Zach. I live in Tucson, Arizona, and I manufacture and distribute small batch hot sauce. Awesome. So, how did you get the idea to start this company? It just kind of happened. I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to explain it other than that. I just kind of fell into it. So I guess, I mean, I mean, yeah, you said that you fell into it, but I guess like, you know what, I mean, I guess, you know, you could start any business, you could do anything, right? So like, I guess like why sauce and, you know, what did that process look like for you? Uh, so I was once a former homeless drug addict, and alcoholic, uh, got sober January 3rd of 2017 and uh, just kind of started making hot sauce one day. Um unintentionally was really trying to mimic this product that I used to get from a little local hot sauce shop that would add heat to barbecue sauce that I would make. And it just kind of turned it into hot sauce, which eventually turned into high desert, which eventually turned into being featured on hot ones. That's really cool. So in terms of like getting this perfect formula together, you know, I'm sure it probably took several iterations. So, you know, f- how long did it take you from the time when it was actually in your mind, like you want to do this, to when it went live and when you actually manufactured the sauce? Uh, I mean, make a sauce in 2017 just to give away to friends and family. High Desert did become a legal entity until September of 2018. At which point we got legal to sell in the state of Arizona. And then in 2020, I went through the FDA process to be able to distribute outside of the state of Arizona. That's awesome. So obviously the sauce space is very competitive. So what would you say makes you better than your competition? Uh, I don't have competition. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in community over competition. I don't. I don't like that word competition. Um, we're all in this together. We're all trying to bring awareness to the spicy community. Um, and if people feel like they're in competition with me, that's that's not my problem. Um, I can say that uh, our products are not co-packed. Like we make everything in house. Everything is processed by these hands and whoever's helping that day. You know what I mean? Uh, the first ingredient of our products is not water because, again, it's not co-packed. Um, we, we just care about our product, I guess. I'm not saying that others don't. But it's just we go the extra mile. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think, Zach, you know, as you mentioned, right, if you're the one that's doing the quality control, if you're looking at that or if you're like you know, even if you're not actually doing it that day like you're very much on top of your product and i think that's a huge differentiator for sure it, it, it is but it also hinders like you know the guys that do um no, i don't want to say guys the people that do get their products co-packed have more time to to ha- um they have more time to uh, hit the pavement they have more time to do trade shows and things that I wouldn't necessarily have time to do because, you know, not only do we manufacture the sauce, but we fulfill all the wholesale on customer service. I pack all the online orders like I do. I do everything, which kind of takes me away from hitting the pavement and expanding the brand uh, the way someone like Bravado, for instance, um, those guys are available everywhere. And if you follow them on any social media, like they're constantly at some kind of trade show or distributor show or hot sauce expo, they're always on the road doing something, uh, expanding their brand. So what does that look like for you? Obviously you mentioned that you, you know, are doing most things yourself, but are you looking into hiring more people? Like 
what does scalability look like for you? Like, what's your big vision for it? What's my what? Like, um, what's your big vision for your brand? Like, are you planning on hiring more people? Like, how are you going to scale this business? Uh, I don't know. This is all new to me. I don't know nothing about food based businesses. I've been in construction my whole life and, um, you know, painting contractor for a good portion of it. And all that was word of mouth. You know what I mean? So, this, where you have to have a marketing plan and you have to have a marketing budget is a whole new thing to me. Uh, so short answer is I have no idea. That makes sense. So I guess like as of right now, you mentioned that you're selling direct to consumer, but also wholesale. Well, so, yeah. so, so like, what's the breakdown? Is it, you know, what percent would you say is like wholesale, like in retail stores versus people buying directly from your website? Uh, the majority of it is direct to me. Like I just added a, uh, a little find us section on the website where you can type in your zip code and I'll give you the closest store to where you go purchase. And we are uh, only in like 50 stores throughout the United States, which is not a lot in comparison to a lot of these other brands. So you mentioned that you don't really have a huge, you know, or like a marketing strategy per se, or, or I guess like you don't have like a big one, but I guess like what has worked for you so far? Like how have people found out about high desert um you know the 50 stores that you're in like how have you made those connections to so get your products in the stores i'm i'm not 100 percent sure uh we got our fda approval the day covid shut the world down uh so here i was sitting on you know product that i just made and, uh, a brand that no one really knew uh, so I joined a lot of the Facebook groups, hot sauce fa Facebook groups, and I'm just like, hey, we're a new company, we got our FDA approval, obviously, uh, the world's in chaos right now. And I offered our first several, <clears throat> excuse me, run of sauces at like $5 a bottle to just kind of get our name out there. And as the brand became a little more popular and people got to know my story from almost, you know, former homeless drug addict, now sober, doing this. It just kind of, kind of grew naturally, I guess. That's cool. Like, what, like, what did that look like? You mentioned obviously you're a homeless drug addict, and obviously now you're running a successful business. So, you know, can, can you talk more about like? I think it's really impressive, and and it's you know obviously your resilience to not only you know give up what you were doing, and and but also just to start a business. I think that most people don't have the entrepreneurial spirit and that kind of resilience that you have. So. What was that process like for you to actually go and start a business like in the first place? Can you just get, just get more into that? Uh, sure. Uh, the short answer is I don't make a good employee. And it's not that I wouldn't show up to work every day and do my job. I just, I don't like working for other people. Uh, I've always, from like the age of 20 until now, I've pretty much just worked for myself so even if i were to leave high desert i would definitely still be working for myself right but like what was that like I mean, like what was that turning point for you like when you were say you're a homeless drug addict you said listen like i need to stop doing drugs i need to you know get off the streets and like what was that turning point for you uh i mean i've battled with addiction <laughs> pretty much my whole life you know there's been periods of sobriety but i always fall back into it and january 3rd of 2017 was actually me coming off a several day relapse from the new year's eve prior where i thought it'd be a good idea to drink some whiskey after being sober for six months uh, i was in a hotel room on the verge of losing everything i had built over the last six months uh I was almost homeless again, almost jobless again. So at that point, I really I just had to make a decision to either continue living the life that I was currently living with copious amounts of alcohol or change. So I chose to change. That's <laughs> awesome. No, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's awesome that you, you know, chose to change and then also start a business. I think it's like, like I said, it's like most people, even people who might not be employable, like I, I don't like working with other people either, but it's like many people don't say, okay, like I'm going to start a business. Like it's, it's pretty cool to think outside the box. So when it comes to technology and your business, like what does that look like for you? I mean, obviously give a website, do you Shopify? Like what does that look like for you? 
Uh, we do use Shopify. We're also on Fair, which is like a wholesale platform. Uh, I've signed up on a website called Range Me, which connects you with like Costco, Target, you know, a lot of the big box stores. I haven't really done anything with that yet just because we are still pretty small. And if I got an order like that, pretty screwed. Um, obviously, we're on just, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you know. So uh, obviously now is the role of AI. So what is where like what's the role of AI play into your business? I don't use it. <laughs> what about like for content writing? Do you ever use like Chat GPT? Nope. Nope. I am unfamiliar with all of it. I have no idea. Um, you know, uh I am technically a millennial because I was born in 81. However, I was raised very Gen X. So, you know, the progress of technology in the last almost 42 years um, has been pretty substantial. And uh, I don't know, AI makes me a little nervous. <laughs> but, but do you feel like AI could potentially help your business? I don't I don't know enough about it to answer that question. I haven't looked into it. I, I, you know, I mean, I, I look at some apps that claim that they can help on my Shopify store, and I'm just apprehensive because artificial intelligence is kind of scary. That's fair. What would you say is the biggest challenge you're facing right now in the business? Growth. I mean, we've uh, we kind of like rocketed up, and now we're kind of plateaued. So I need I need to hit another upward swing. So basically for you, right? Like let's just say if you got a big order from Costco or a big retailer at that point, that's when you start sort of like ramping things up saying, okay, now I have to hire more people. I don't know. What's the question? I'm sorry. So so I guess because like you said earlier, right? That like you're looking to grow. And a big challenge right now is that you don't have the bandwidth, for example, to support like a big order, right? So if Costco came in and said, hey, I need you to get into 100 stores, right? So what? So you sort of in this position now where you're waiting for to make that connection and to have a big order placed, and then at that point you would hire more people? Like is that no, essentially... More, more, more people is not going to solve that issue. Like we still work out of a shared kitchen space. You know what I mean? So we're very limited right. on space, okay? We can only make 40 gallons at a time at most, maybe 80 gallons if we work a long day, but then it's like, right. we got to take that 80 gallons and we got to take it back over the warehouse where you know we, it's labeled. And it's, it's not a people issue. It's a space issue. It's, it's a, like a goldfish. Uh, I, am, I can only go as big as my environment allows me to. So if that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So for you, it's more about like, you know, what scalability looks like maybe moving into like a bigger facility at that time, you know, once you got more orders from a, like a larger retailer, for example. And um, um, what was the question? So like, the question is, so for you, like scalability is more so like you mentioned, it's more related to space. It's not about people. It's more like, getting into a larger facility so you can make more sauce and serve more customers. Right. 100%. I mean, like I said, we, we, we don't even run full 40 gallon kettles at this exact moment just because uh, the warehouse space doesn't allow for, it. you know, what do we, we got like 14 flavors. So if I did a full kettle of every flavor, that's, I don't know. That's, that's just a lot of cases of sauce in, in, a, confined, in a confined spot makes sense what would you say is the one biggest piece of advice that you wish you knew before you started this business <laughs> if i go back and start over i wouldn't make sauces that were so complicated i wouldn't fire roast anything no i would not i would i just wouldn't do it i i would gear my product more towards the things that you can dump in the kettle blend up and uh, package pretty quickly um you we fire roast a lot of stuff currently and it's just makes it a huge pain, but. So are you um, thinking of pivoting or are you going to stick with the fire roast thing? I mean, we this is what we've built our brand on. We can't just go back on it now. Right, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yeah. Like, 
I've been told that High Desert has a signature. Like if I, if someone tasted a sauce that was ours, that was unlabeled, they would be able to pinpoint exactly who made it because I have a signature in my product and uh, I can't really change my signature at this point. No, yeah. I mean, that's actually amazing. I think it's like if you can have that sort of differentiator where people can taste it without you know, actually knowing if it's like, you know, cause it, it, like as we spoke about earlier about competition, yeah, I mean, you can view it as competition and that makes sense. Like, you know, that you're all one community. And I think in business too, it's like, you know, you can have a different sauce company that has a different value and maybe low cost, higher cost targeting, like it's, it's like a different market. But for you, it's like, you know, the fact that somebody can actually taste it and without knowing that it's your sauce on the label, that's really amazing. Yeah, I mean, I've I've heard that comment on several occasions from many different people. So it's it's it's, it's nice to know that you know we, we make really pro cool. products that are enough of a difference from everything else that's out there that people can pinpoint what we uh, manufacture. That's awesome. So <laughs> if we were, if, if we were to have this conversation again in one year from now, where do you expect things to go for High Desert? I have I have no idea. I have no idea. Like I said, I'm kind of like a goldfish right now. I can only grow as large as my environment allows me to. So, um, <clears throat> you know, we were on hot ones in 2021, which was a massive order, but we had a co-packer. Co-packer bottled that product incorrectly. It was blowing up in people's faces. So we suffered like a 24,000 bottle recall because of it. I had to remake the product with a different co-packer. And now I'm like sixty thousand dollars in legal fees. Trying to get recoups from the original co-packer, who's now going bankrupt. Like uh, I was like one hundred forty-seven thousand dollars that I lost. So <laughs> uh, it just put a little damper on our growth plan. No, for sure. I think in business, oftentimes it's you know you you learn from those experiences, and from there you're like, okay, you know, it's about having that sort of resilience. The fact that you know, you have that setback and you're still pushing through and you're still putting out great product every day. I think that's amazing. So if somebody uh, watching this wanted to reach out to you, do you mind sharing your website or social media uh, handles? Like best way to get in contact with you. Everything is at each or high desert sauce company. The website is hdsauceco.com. Uh, email is info at hdsauceco.com. Awesome. Well, Zach, I want to say thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. We're rooting for you. Hopefully, you have a strong Q4 and a great finish to this year. Thank you again for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks. All right. Bye. Later.